I am joined by Dr. Charles Harris, Health Officer at the Hamilton County Health Department. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Tammy. State Health Commissioner Dr. Christina Box announced that we may be recording COVID deaths just a little differently as we move forward. Can you tell us about that, why, why they're doing that? Um, initially, they, uh, we would just uh, record um, the positive results, uh, COVID positive and then uh, pneumonia and whatnot. Uh, based on the actual testing. Now, uh, as of a uh, few days ago, uh, Dr. Box and the Indiana State Health Department decided they would like to get a broader feel for COVID involvement in, in deaths. So they're wanting uh, to be included on the death certificate COVID cases that aren't proven to be positive by the nasal swab test we're all familiar with. So what that means is that uh, practitioners, doctors, now are getting enough experience uh, diagnosing uh, COVID-19 disease that they can actually pretty much make the diagnosis based on what's called clinical evidence. So kind of like you'd take your child into the doctor's office and say, well, you know, this looks like chicken pox. Well, many times I've di diagnosed chicken pox and other diseases just by looking at that. So that's that's called a clinical diagnosis. So. Uh, long story short, we're trying to put that in to get a better, broader picture of somebody that might have passed away from pneumonia, but also uh, COVID is is part of the process. So that will uh, amplify and uh, hopefully they're looking uh, to use that information just to get a better handle on uh, how how much it's in the community. But in the short term, that may mean that we see our number of deaths jump a little bit in the coming yeah. days, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, so, we might expect the numbers to go up just because we broadened the definition of a COVID death, basically. Mm -hmm. exactly. um, so the question that I, I've been wondering, and I know a lot of people have had on their minds, is can we get this again? I know we've seen hundreds of people in South Korea who tested positive and then tested negative, and now are testing positive again. What does that mean? How do you interpret that information? Well, so what happened was that uh, we again we're far enough along in this process that we we're now we're seeing this kind of data come out and South Korea their uh, uh, CDC of South Korea uh, had a, uh, a study of 163 patients and uh, they found that uh, what was happening then was these folks were were like you said were getting uh, testing positive after getting over their first round so there's two possibilities, that it, uh, at least two. One would be a relapse of what ha had been happening before. So uh, the second possibility would be a recurrence. Now a relapse, uh, I've got a couple notes here, pardon me, away. a relapse um, would occur, uh, so, some thoughts, and these are just theories of, of how that could happen, would be a, uh, so you've had your, your, your disease, you've gotten over it, and then all of a sudden, a couple, they're looking at two weeks after that where these folks are testing positive. So it could be a reactivation of the virus that has been in their system. So in other words, uh, th the immune response we have, uh, just a quick uh, refresher course on biology, the, our uh, white blood cells, specifically the lymphocytes, produce antibodies. And, and they're happening every day, all day long, all our life. They're protecting us against viruses and bacteria. And what. So what happens when the coronavirus gets into our system, the IgM, which is produced by the lymphocytes, goes up. And I always try, to, I always remember this, the M in my mind stands for mean. So these are the antibodies that go up to attack the virus initially. So that's the first phase. Along with it, we have the IgG. The G, I, in my mind, got me through medical school. It stands for good. So the IgM goes up, starts the process of getting the body and the, in the defense mode. The IgG goes up. The IgM goes down, but the IgG keeps going. So this is the IgG is what we want to have go on for a lifetime, hopefully. So what could happen to explain, okay, you've had the COVID virus, you get better, you test positive of two weeks later, is that IgM and the IgG didn't work. So it just was a weak immune system. 
And that happens, uh, as, as we all know by now, as we get older, our immune system gets uh, a little more uh, frail, doesn't, uh, isn't as robust, and that's why we see more deaths in, in the elderly population. Uh, the other thought would be that the coronavirus may just come into our bodies and just remain dormant. So the body doesn't respond, it just sits there and then turns positive so you don't get sick. It's just part of being in your body living there. Uh, let's say a couple other thoughts um, that the second test is is maybe just picking up uh, dead viruses. So that could explain why we're getting positives. Uh, they did do uh, try to culture the virus in six of those cases, 106, and nothing grew. So that's kind of interesting that these viruses. Um, and then the ones that did relapse when they did those, uh, 61 of those people had just very mild symptoms. Um, so that's all relapse. That could happen again. Those are just theories, and we're, they're still in the process of figuring that out. The second possibility would be recurrence. And like it sounds, you just have another infection of COVID from, from another carrier. So you just get reinfected. Um, the false pot, so you'd think, okay, well, is this just, are the tests messed up? We hear a lot about false negatives, uh, that there's a, a higher rate than we'd all like for false negatives, about 30%. False positives are very rare. Um, and most of those, if they are false positives, would be probably due to maybe a, po a problem or an error in collecting it. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to get the test done to have it done. And it's as hard sometimes to, to do the test because you've got to get this snake, this uh, swab way back in a very uncomfortable place. So, uh, or it could be contaminated. So false positives are rare. Uh, so. Uh, just a real quick uh, kind of put this in perspective. Uh, our immune response we talked about earlier, the IgM and IG, IgG happens um, uh, in about two weeks after getting exposed to uh, the coronavirus. Now in flu, our IgG, our immunity lasts about six months. So that's why we need a flu shot every year. The MMR, when we get two shots as kids and babies. Right now, you could say that the MMR, IgG, immune or immunity lasts a lifetime. And somewhere in between that, the pneumonia vaccine lasts about four to five years. So that kind of gives you an idea. So all that to say that right now, we don't know where coronavirus is in that, in that batch. Does it last <clears throat> days, weeks, months, years, or a lifetime? So that's why we're doing the antibody testing to figure all that out. To do it yourself, number one, doesn't tell you you've, you've got the disease now, it's just telling you if you've had it. And it's to be positive for it is not a get out of jail card free. Just because you've got that doesn't necessarily mean you test positive for antibody now, because if, if, there's a lot of these kits that'll be flooding the market here in the next weeks. So just beware, I think there's only four right now that are FDA approved. A lot of these uh, aren't really, haven't gone through the scientific rigor that uh, the FDA usually does. So we've, we've got to beware. Uh, if you start doing your own antibody test, it doesn't mean that you can't spread the disease. But generally speaking, a positive test um, means that you won't be able to transmit it. So for how long, you know, we're still working on that. Um, and just to give you an idea, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, the study in Los Angeles was, a uh, they did a, a broad study of several thousand patients uh, that had uh, tested positive for COVID that, with a nasal swab and they did antibodies. And there were about 4% of those that were positive. And, and then the herd immunity is about 60% as I explained earlier. So. So we're starting to gather this data to figure out how soon can we get out there? How can we, when can we go back out to eat and go to ball games? And so it's still a work in progress. This is brand new. We don't have the experience we have with these other vaccines. And so, uh, so that's kind of, kind of it in a nutshell, Tammy. That was the other thing I was gonna ask yeah. you. Some people are really anxious to just reopen the economy. What are your thoughts or warnings about that? Well, I think you know there's a there's there's several three parts to this. One is uh, you know testing to see if you've you've had it or uh, I'm sorry if you have it. 
So that's the test we're all familiar with. Up to the, number two is to test the contacts of those people and figure out what's going on around you. And then the third part is the antibody testing. Uh, so you put all these together and then and then you've got communities that are less affected than others. You've got states. So so it's 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 kind of just a really uh, you know, a work in progress. Uh, I think I'm like everybody else. I hope we get out. I love, you know, we'd all love to pick a date uh, and but it's just not that simple. So we're still kind of gathering the uh, who's got it, where they've got it, the antibodies and kind of as as we go through this, I can sh hopefully have better uh, information to share with you, but it's still uh, we're still getting it all together. So hopefully We'll have some idea in, you know, within a few weeks, uh, I would think sometime in next month, as the next month rolls along, we'll start to get more of this back. And then we'll be looking to the, on the local level here in Hamilton County, uh, you know, how do we fare? Uh, we're next to a big county, uh, Marion County. So how how do we interact if, if, we, if we decide it's okay locally to open up, but they don't, so how do we do that? And uh, again, a lot of this will be data driven, as uh, so we just need to kind of start with getting the data, I guess, simply uh, simply start with the simple stuff, put it put it down, try to make sense of it all, and hopefully get it get us out and going. The sooner the better. I think we're all in agreement there. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank Dr. You, Dr. Charles, Charles Harris, Harris, Health Officer at the Hamilton County Health Department. We appreciate your time. All right, thank you, Tammy.